Do defined benefit pensions increase with inflation? The simple answer to this is yes. However, it is also dependent upon your defined benefit scheme and the terms and conditions. As such, not all pension schemes rise with exact inflation figures that you might see being published um, uh, in the UK uh, media. As such, this doesn't necessarily mean that your defined benefit pension is always keeping up with the inflation figures that you see. The reason for this is that many defined benefit schemes will follow different models and metrics in terms of um, inflation, whether that be RPI, CPI, and a lot of them have a, some, a certain cap or a limit on the amount of inflation proofing that they will offer you. Um, if you need to understand more about your pension pot to understand how your pension pot is protected by inflation, you can get in touch below, uh, book in a conversation with myself or one of our senior financial advisors to have a full um, uh, conversation. Now, the bigger point here is, and the majority of you finding this video are probably researching to understand, okay, I got a defined benefit pension pot. If it increases in inflation for life, then perhaps that's a very good investment and maybe I should keep it where it is and I shouldn't transfer it. I know there's been some very large CETVs recently, perhaps I should leave it where it is. And the answer for the majority of you will likely be yes. And this is certainly the UK government's and the FCA's opinion as well, that the majority of people would be better off keeping their defined benefit pension um, than completing um, a transfer out. However, this might not be the case for everyone. So, say you have a defined benefit scheme um, that doesn't allow you to do what you want to in your life. So you have, say, um, half a million pounds in your defined benefit pension scheme that they're offering you as a cash equivalent transfer value. They're offering you an annual pension um, uh, per annum. That annual pension might not be a game changer in your life. It might not allow you to do what you want to do um, in the earlier years of your retirement. As such, you may be looking to consider um, a transfer. You may also have a situation where your defined benefit scheme is almost somewhat irrelevant, or perhaps not irrelevant, but maybe it's worth half a million, but you have two million in other liquid assets, your property or whatever, and you're not really reliant upon the income from that, and you prefer to take it and have a little bit more control um, uh, over that capital. Another big question is, Inside a defined benefit scheme, you're uh, protected to inflation by the certain level of whatever uh, factors are used by your scheme. However, as you will know in the markets, generally over the course of time, where inflation is at now in the markets is very, very high. And having investment performance, which is going to match or outperform in inflation, is more difficult in current times. I'm talking in 2023. However, in periods where inflation is a lot lower, the market returns, generally speaking, are much higher over the course of time. So say you have a balanced portfolio of 60-70% equity, you'd be getting around 8, 9, 10% return over the past 20, 30, 40, 100 years in the equity market. As such, the return inside a SIP or a personal pension can often be far higher than a defined benefit scheme, but you are moving away from that guarantee of having that guaranteed gold-plated growth inside a defined benefit scheme compared to um, a defined uh, contribution scheme. So I made a couple of points earlier a minute ago about some of the reasons people might look to transfer out. But as I say again, for a lot of you, if your defined benefit pension is pretty much the only major asset you have, you, your family, your partner, your children are gonna be reliant upon that guaranteed income throughout your retirement. It's almost certain, obviously I can't give advice here, but it's almost certain that you would be better off maintaining um, that pension pot where it is, collecting um, the annual pension that you receive on your normal retirement date, typically 65 or whatever, uh, 60 inside some schemes, and not doing anything uh, with your defined benefit plan. Uh, the point that I've just made there, 65. For some people, 65 is a normal retirement age. For some people, 65 is early. They want to work to 75. Some people 65 is late. They want to retire at 50 or 55. Everyone has a different life and a different lifestyle. Some people maybe missed out on the early years of their kids, didn't spend any time with them, or maybe they're having children later in life and they want to spend more time with them. Other people may want to continue working and doing lots and lots of hours. Some people may ha not have any kids or family at all. Everyone's situation is different. And this is where a quality financial advisor can come in to actually help you understand what is it that you want? And this is a question that most people just never get asked. You work for 10, 20, 30 years. People don't ask you, why are you going to work? Why do you earn the money you do? Well, I have bills and I have more, but why? What's your goals? What's your rationale? What are you trying to achieve? Oh, well, I want to have a comfortable retirement. Okay, well, let's have a look at that. Have you already achieved retirement? Okay, you have a million pounds in the bank. You have your property, you have this, you have that. You've actually already reached retirement, but you're still working. Oh, I never realized that advisor. Um, okay, what can I do then? Well, it's up to you. 
You can either continue working or maybe you can go to your boss and say, actually, you know what? I don't really need this job anymore. Maybe you can get better terms of them, less hours, more money, whatever it might be. That is the value um, of a financial advisor. And I know I kind of sidetracked from uh, inflation um, on DB schemes, but it's all connected here. And these are the type of conversations that a financial advisor will be able to answer for you. Inflation proofing on your DB scheme, as I said, it may well be you're advised not to move your DB scheme if you went through an advice process that we facilitated for you. However, in doing that advice process, it's probably likely there's many other areas of your finances that you could look to improve. And just by doing some basic cash flow planning, well, I call it basic, it's not basic at all. <laughs> it probably takes my team a good two, three, four hours to plug in the data for each of our clients. But the outcome and the reports we get is just outstanding. You literally have clients for the first time in their life looking at a document which summarizes what is gonna happen until they die. Now, a little bit morbid, no one wants to think about dying, but get a grip, you know? <laughs> I, I'm in my 30s, but a lot of my clients in their 50s and their 60s, they need to think about this. You are gonna die. It's normal, everyone dies, it's the journey of life. But what's gonna happen after you die? You can't get to your 70s and 80s and start trying to give away all your assets because you get stung for inheritance tax. Well, you can, um, but it won't be a very successful strategy. Getting financial planning advice much earlier um, is more beneficial um, for the majority of clients. Um, I hope you found this valuable on inflation. Uh, let me know any comments in the section. Let me know any uh, comments in the section below what inflation rates your scheme offers, whether they've gone up or down, whether they've changed in their terms or conditions. And if you want to send over your cash equivalent transfer value, myself and team are more than happy to go through it in detail and explain to you individually what inflation proofing you have um, inside your pension pot. Doesn't clarify as advice. Uh, we would simply just respond to those facts from reading your CETV um, and send it back to you so you have a complete and clear understanding of inflation inside your defined benefit scheme. And as always, take care with your UK pension asset.